Okay, so in the camera lecture, we saw that cameras have a bunch of different properties that are important to know. And the camera manufacturers give you a spec sheet with a lot of these properties of cameras. But in this tip, I want to show you how you can measure a whole number of these things yourself and make sure that they actually conform to the specifications and also that there are certain features that are not listed here but that may be important to you that you can quite easily measure. I have here a camera and this is the camera that belongs to that spec sheet. Um, I have a C-mount on the camera with a cap so that at the moment no light is reaching it. With this capped camera no light is reaching the CCD and that we can see what the dark image looks like and we can do some measurements on that dark image. When I now snap an image, the first thing that I see is that the size of this image is 2048 by 2048 pixels and that is exactly the same as promised on the spec sheet. So we're getting the pixels that we paid for. Now to make this all a little bit easier on the software I'm going to take a subregion and this camera says the spec sheet says that it can take sub areas sub area yes um, and I'll be t working with a subregion of 512 by 512 pixels now what you already see now is that the picture doesn't look black but kind of grainy so there's a certain type of noise and we assume that most of this noise is the readout noise and to now see what this noise is the best thing that you can do is to measure and I've set the software up so that it will measure the mean the average of all these pixel values and the standard deviation and here we see that we have a mean of about a hundred and a standard deviation of about three and the mean in this case is the offset so the manufacturer put the lowest pixel value a certain number higher than zero so that we can actually see this noise and it's not clipped and the standard deviation is a measure for the readout noise when we now go live we see a couple of things. One is that all this noise is uh, changing. We see some lines moving and most likely those lines are some kind of very small amounts of electronic noise happening in the system. Now a test that you always will want to do is to run a series of images um, with no light reaching the camera to see if the, the baseline, that zero level, is the same in all of them. So when I now set this up to take 100 time points and acquire them, first of all you see how incredibly fast this is. We have set an exposure time of 3 milliseconds and this whole series actually takes place in something like 300 milliseconds. So we have 100 images in 300 milliseconds. Then we use this tool here to measure all the intensities and standard deviations in these 100 images. And what we see here when we now scroll through the list is that we have a mean of roughly 101 and stays more or less constant. So indicating that our baseline stays nice and flat and also the standard deviation stays nicely uh, roughly 2.9 to 3. So at this point in time we know that this reflects a readout noise but we don't know yet how digital numbers relate to photons and so to express the readout noise the way we want it in photoelectrons we will need that photon conversion factor that we will calculate later on. One other measure that is intriguing is listed in this spec sheet as the dark current and the dark current is how much charge accumulates on the chip during a longer exposure uh, when no light is re reaching the camera and so we can simply look at that by now setting a longer exposure time I'll 
set an exposure time of five seconds, then snap an image. So the dark current is expressed in electrons per pixel per second. And so now that we have our image here, we see that there is um, that all of a sudden we start to see these very bright pixels coming out uh, of the black background. So we have like what are called hot pixels. Still to see if this spec is roughly right, what we can do is measure the uh, standard deviation and we see that the mean went up by seven tenths or so of a digital number but you see that that standard deviation went up dramatically. So the dark current is um, defined by this mean. So we are a one higher and if we knew how to convert a digital number into a photo electron, we could actually check whether this number was about right and we'll be able to do that later. But the important thing to note is that not all the pixels are accumulating this dark charge the same way. You also see here that in the spec sheet that that dark current depends on something and that something is actually the cooling. So the better we cool the camera and we are now only cooled at minus 10, if we would cool the camera uh, farther then the dark current would go down and these hot pixels would get less uh, prominent. So we now know how this camera responds when there is no light and so the next thing is that we want to know what it responds when there is light. One of the things that is difficult to do is to provide a very homogeneous uh, flat source of illumination and so I use now some very simple tricks to get a relatively even illumination and I'll show you here at the camera how to do that. The first thing we need to do is take the cap off the camera so in here you see the photosensitive chip, the 2048 by 2048 pixels. And then the other thing I use is these um, cups that are semi-transparent and kind of act as a diffuser. And those happen to fit very nicely here on the camera. Then the other concern is the light source. We have fluorescent lights here. Those flicker at a 60 hertz rate. That's not very good. And so what so happens to be is that phones uh, provide a much nicer, very continuous uh, light source. So I'm using here a flashlight application on my phone. You also see that it's set to very dim low light intensities. And I'll just put this in front of the cups to provide a continuous and relatively even source of illumination. When we snap an image we see we see some patterns on it. We also see that it's bright on the top and dark at the bottom and then when we go live we notice pretty profound flickering and that flickering is coming from those fluorescent lights that we still have on in here. So we'll need to switch the lights off to have our constant continuous illumination. With the phone and the cups in front of the camera snap an image, I see first of all in my histogram that we have bright pixels. They're distributed in a relatively narrow area and what I see on the screen is that we have a relatively homogeneous illumination, although it's still a little darker here in the corners. And we see some strange faults. We see some strange patterns here. What is highly useful is to again take something like a hundred images here and then average the hundred of them. And so that will then show us how the individual pixels are responding to the light with which we're illuminating. So I acquired a hundred images. I then make a uh, projection of it and what I say is to simply sum all the numbers and that in the end will then give us a um, 
average image. And the first thing that we note in that average image is how homogeneous it is. And what we also note that certain pixels respond worse than others. So for instance, right here are some pixels that respond very poorly, much more poorly than their neighbors. And we also see that there's some patterns that basically are on the uh, photosensitive area itself. One piece of information that is missing and that we really want to know is how these digital numbers correlate with photons hitting the sensor. And so to figure that out, what we're going to do is to take images with illumination like we used here to get that flat field. So homogeneous illumination. And then in those images, we're going to measure the uh, average intensity. And we're also going to measure the noise in the image. And so since um, uh, the noise is going to be limited, hopefully, only by uh, photon shot noise, we know that that noise should go with the square root of the intensity. And so out of that relation, we can then backtrack what the photon conversion factor is. And um, I wrote a number of scripts that make it relatively easy and straightforward to uh, measure that photon conversion factor. So what these scripts are going to do is that first we're going to acquire a data set and we're going to acquire a data set with increasing exposure times. Every time we're taking two images at the same exposure time and we're doing that to correct for inhomogeneities in the illumination because we take these two images we subtract them from each other and from that subtracted image we calculate the noise and we correct that then uh, by the square root of two um, and so that way we can actually deal with certain uh, uh, inhomogeneous il illumination so then at the end we'll have uh, intensities at different intensity levels and we have the noise, the variance that uh, uh, we measured from those images. We will plot that on a log-log scale and from that plot we can deduce the photon conversion factor. So we open the script panel here. I prepared the three scripts that we need. We need to run this script plot just once then we're going to use this script camera labs and that's what we're using to acquire the data so we have to enter a few values here one is the final exposure 100 milliseconds is okay 50 exposures is fine we can start here at uh, three milliseconds is probably also roughly about right we can start I think at 2.1 and now when I run this so it will be taking images at increasing sets of images at increasing exposure times these are being auto scaled so it's only actually from the the reduce the apparent noise reducing that we see that our uh, exposure times are increasing. Once we have this, we will run the um, analysis script and that will now process all the images and it will give us two things. So one is the photon transfer curve. This is plotting the signal, the mean intensity as a digital number against the noise, the variance, as a digital number. And, you, and this is plotted on a log-log plot, and you see that it is relatively straight. Here at the um, lower end, if we were able to go to very short exposure times, this would go to the readout noise. However, this camera doesn't let us set very short exposure times, so we don't really 
get that low. There's a little bump here, don't know what that is. Um, you also see that it starts to level off here somewhere at this point and that is where we are filling the pixels. So we're we are reaching saturation here. We can run another one where we go to slightly higher exposure times and you'll see that it really starts to will go down again here. So we have here the photon transfer curve as we measure it, measured it. So we see here that it is pretty straight along most um, of the uh, area where we measured. And we can now in this table, we can look for areas where the slope on the log log plot is 0.5. And a slope of 0.5 indicates that we're, uh, the relation between the two is the square root. And that means that this is the area where we're really limited by photon shot noise. So wherever that slope is 0.5 or close to it, we can read out the photon conversion factor. And you'll see here that the photon conversion factor is in a pretty close area, so roughly between 0.4 and 0.46. So 0.45 is a pretty good estimation for the photon conversion factor. Now, when we go back to the beginning, where we measured on a dark image a standard deviation of 3, we now know that we have to multiply that 3 in digital numbers with this 0.45 to get the readout noise in uh, photoelectrons. I think the readout noise was actually 2.9. And so there we get a, a readout noise in photoelectrons of 1.305. Now when we go back to the spec sheet, we see that the read noise is given as 1.3 electrons root mean square. And so this indicates that we are measuring very much the same thing that the manufacturer measured. And the specs are holding up to what was promised. So the other thing that we are seeing is that we are reaching around here, we're reaching full well capacity. So now our noise is not going up anymore with the square root. And we can read out here that that is happening around a signal in digital numbers of about, let's say, 55,000. And so this indicates that we are reaching full well capacity. And likewise, we can now multiply 55,000 by our photon conversion factor of 0.45. And from that, we get a full well capacity of roughly 25,000. Now, the manufacturer gives a full well capacity of 30,000. One thing that is possible is that we are here uh, not reaching the real full well capacity of the uh, the pixels itself, but we're getting close to 64,000, which is the end of the 16-bit range. So we are just starting to um, cut off pixel values, and that will also reduce the actual noise here. Okay, I hope I explained to you how with very simple means you can check the quality and of your camera, and you can really quite easily measure if your camera is performing the way you would like it to perform.